Good morning, everyone. I would like to welcome you to the very first Sunlam Easy Retirement Plan webinar. Very excited to be hosting this webinar today. Um, this is the very first one that unpacks the two-part retirement system. My name is Yolanda Kozula. I am executive consultant for Sunlam Umbrella Solutions. Sunlam Umbrella Solutions is the business unit that looks after all of Sunlam's umbrella funds. Before we get onto the business of the day, I would like to just highlight some guidelines um, for the webinar. Your cameras and microphones have been disabled for this webinar. Um, however, you're welcome to send through your questions via the Q&A button that's available on the toolbar, and these will be addressed at the end of the session. We will also provide you with a recording of the webinar that will be made available post the event. So worry not, should you miss any part of the sessions, you will be able to go back and view the, re um, the, the recording. So today, we have brought you the topic that is top of mind and that is making the buzz around the industry currently, which is the two-part retirement system. I'm not by myself. I am accompanied by my colleague, Zaitunisa Enos, who is our business solutions architect. So between Zaitu and I, we are going to be talking about understanding the two-part system. So I will take you through that part. And then Zaitu will take you through navigating the Sandam corporate portal, which is our digital platform um, that is utilized that you can use to um, to submit a two-part withdrawals and also to submit the normal withdrawals for resignations, retrenchments, and retirals. So she's, she's going to show you some screens on how to actually do that. Very easy platform to utilize. So happy to, 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 to be here today to take you through um, all of that. And I will, without wasting any um, further time, I'm going to take you straight into it. And I want us to first address what the two-part retirement system is and why the two-part system, right? Why the change was initiated by government. There's two parts to it. The first part is um, the part, the fact that government recognizes that there is a need for um, South Africa, regular South Africans to access financial or they, they retire in savings in times of financial distress. So the system seeks to address exactly that. The second part to it is that a lot of members that are participating in retirement funds resign just to access their retirement savings because of the financial strain that currently we are facing within South Africa. We all know, more especially post-COVID, um, what that has done to the financials of South Africans. So government saw the need to make this accessible to, to um, members of retirement funds in order to be able to use the funds in emergencies. And that's what it is. That's what it's, it seeks to achieve, only to be accessible during emergencies. So from 1 September 2024, the two-part system went live. We are excited and happy to confirm that our systems that were new digital systems were introduced and affected 1 September. Um, from 1 September, the way in which members' retirement savings are displayed um, and are reported are in three different parts, if you may. So I know we talk about two-part system and yet we will continue seeing three different parts or three different components as government terms it. So in trying to in, in trying to explain these different parts, I'm going to talk to old money and I'm going to talk to new money. Then maybe that will be a simpler term of actually unpacking this. So when I define old money, I'm talking monies that have been invested into the retirement um, arrangement post 1 September, which is up to 31 August. So that old money is the money that you will see reflected in the vested pot. 
So all contributions for members post 1 September will be reflected in the vested pot. And in this pot, members can only access retirement money at termination of employment. And you may also recall that there was changes to, um, that were effected which we, 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 that, which the industry named the T-Day legislation, 1 March 2021. And that T-Day legislation is still applicable in respect of vested pot. And under this vested pot, there was non-vested, um, there was a non-vested component and a vested component. That still applies in terms of T-Day legislation in respect of the vested pot. So that continues. And then now we move on to new money. New money being contributions from 1 September 2024. So when we talk about the two-part system, we are talking about the new money. This is where now we see the establishment of the two parts. The two parts are then the savings part and the retirement part. The savings part allows members to access a portion or, or whatever is available on the savings part um, at emergencies. And that is called an emergency savings withdrawal. And then we've got the retirement part, which helps people to save or helps members to save towards the retirement. They can only access this, um, the, the savings component of this at retirement only. So that's the differentiator, old money and new money. New money, we know it goes into the savings pot. All the investments or the fund credits invested into these different pots also generate returns as they would per normal post and, and, and um, pre 1 September. So that remains the same. That is ultimately in summary what the two part system looks like. And then there's a new buzzword as well in the industry with, um, with regards to the two part, and that is seeding. And I want to take this time to just unpack what we mean when we talk to seeding, right? The seeding means that a portion of the vested pot will be transferred from the vested pot into a savings pot. And that portion is a maximum of 10%. Of well, not a maximum, it's 10% of the vested pot rather will be transferred into save the savings pot with a maximum of 30,000 rand. So there will be a limitation to that. Let me make an example. Where a member has um, 300,000 rand invested currently sitting in the vested pot, 10% of that is 30,000 rand, and that will be transferred into the savings pot. But where a member has 500,000 rand, 10% of that is 50,000 rand. So that means the transfer to the vested pot will only be kept at 30,000 rand. If, however, they've got 200,000 rand invested, 10% is 20,000 rand. So and only up to the 10% will be transferred into the savings pot, which will be then 20,000 rand. This seeded amount into the savings pot allows members to then have access to an emergency savings 1 September 2024. The seeding process took effect within the Sunlam Easy Retirement Plan. Um, 1 September or rather 2 September because that was the first working day of September uh, in, in within the Sunlam space, Sunlam Easy Retirement space. And this 10% is accessible to members to, um, to withdraw as an emergency savings pot. And then we are going, we, we are going to look a little bit into the contributions towards the two-pot system post 1 September and how the contributions will then be handled. Firstly, vested pot, no new contributions will go into the vested pot. And um, what I'm showing you on the slides there is the amount that would possibly be invested in as, as an savings pot. For this particular example, I have used a member that contributes on SM4 
that contributes a monthly contribution of about of 630 rand. That's a standard SM4 contributions towards this. Um, and for the purposes of this example, I have not taken into account any expenses and any um, risk insurance expenses towards this, right? So let's say our member contributes 630 rand post 1 September. The contributions received from September onwards, one third of that contribution, which is in this case 210 Rand, will go into the savings pot. And the two thirds, which is 420 Rand, will then also go into the savings pot. It will be invested into the savings pot. Contributions for all three pots will all be invested in the same strategy. and. Um, for the Sundam Easy, there's one investment strategy, so it's very easy to apply this, and those contributions will be invested accordingly to that one investment strategy. <coughs> Adding to that, um, any voluntary contributions that members want to put on or to, 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 to add to their monthly contributions will also be invested into that one investment strategy and the one third, two thirds split will apply. So we must remember again, I'm talking new money here. So this is money post one September. So any contributions there, therefore will then be split between the one third and the two thirds contribution post one September. So that will be applied for AVCs, that will be applied for your monthly contributions going forward. There is um, an exception to the participation for members that are 55 years and older in terms of whether they want to participate to the sun um, to the two part retirement system. So this exception is applicable to members that are members of provident funds and that were members of provident funds. Um, on 1 March 2021, and they were 55, 1 March 2021 and older. These members must be members that have remained invested in the very same provident fund that they were invested in, in March 2021, for this exception to apply to them. So they've got two options. The first option is to either remain contributing according to the T-Day regime, which is the old money regime, the vested and non-vested regime, that is continue contributing according to um, the way in which contributions applied up to 31 August 2024. So if a member selects this option, they will continue making contributions into the vested pot alone and will not contribute towards the two part retirement system. At retirement, any amount that they invested into the vested pot can be taken in cash and subject we and that is subject to tax as it would apply accordingly. OK, and the balance of that would then be required to purchase a pension. The second option for these members would be to participate in um, to participate in the retire two part retirement system. It's very important for members to understand once they make this choice, they cannot go back on this decision. So once the decision is made, it's not reversible. Once they go into the two part system, I cannot stress this enough. Um, they are in there. The decision needs to be made. Um, in the next 12 months up to or before the 1st of September 2025. Once a decision has been made, they'll start contributing to the savings part and to the retirement part with the one third, two third split from the first month following the month in which the fund receives the decision to move to the two part system. Um, that will then allow them to make one withdrawal per tax year from the emergency savings pot, like the, anybody else that is in the two pot savings um, system. They will, the members will still be able to take the invested pot in cash should they resign um, before retirement and the two pot rules will apply 
in terms of the new monies again, which is the, the, the savings part and the retirement part. Now moving in on to the cash withdrawal from the savings pot um, in respect of how or what, what is applicable for members in the space, right? Sorry, that just moved too fast for me. So the savings pot, and again, I cannot stress this enough, is designed for emergencies or financial distress only. The idea behind it is to assist members that have savings in that part to access those savings during financial distress or where there is an emergency. There is a minimum 2,000 Rand withdrawal that is legislated that can be processed uh, or in, which is required a requirement for members to access that part. So if a member does not have a minimum of 2,000 Rand in their invest in their savings pot, they cannot request for a cash with emergency savings withdrawal from this um, savings pot. When a member submits a cash withdrawal or when you as an employer or the CBC on behalf of the member submits this emergency savings withdrawal on behalf of the member, um, you, you need to remember that, or the member needs to understand rather that there is a tax that will be deductible, which I'm going to actually look into at the next slide. And also the, the Sunlam retirement plan will also um, charge an additional administration admin fee towards that retirement. So the gross amount is 2,000 rand that can be withdrawn from the savings pot. Members cannot access the retirement pot at any given stage until they reach the retirement, the normal retirement age or they um, agreed upon retirement or decided upon retirement date. The same applies for a vested pot. Members can continue um, accessing that vested pot when they re um, resign from the employer and obviously according to the T-day regime rules that will apply. If we look into what is the actual financial impact for members accessing the emergency savings withdrawals. They can access this once every tax year. And when we talk tax year, we mean one from one March to 28 or 29 February each year. And during that period, the tax that will be applicable will be as per the marginal tax rate, where a member owes SARS um, anything. The taxman, we know the taxman will keep knocking and if you've got a SARS debt, they will deduct that amount from the amount uh, of the emergency savings withdrawal requested. An additional administration fee, as I've mentioned in the previous slide, will be charged um, and this fee covers the additional administration that takes that will take place in respect of these ongoing um, savings pot withdrawals. This fee will be charged per withdrawal request. Net proceeds will then be paid out to members. We have anticipated in building up um, and getting ready for the two-part system high volumes and therefore we have introduced an automated digital digital only withdrawal um, process for these withdrawals, for these emergency savings withdrawals. We are in no way accepting any manual withdrawals. Um, we require the employer and where the employer appoints an intermediary to submit these withdrawals via the intermediary portal, which is what is I2 will also take you through to show you how to do that. There's no other way, no manual forms or anything of that nature that can be accepted or will be accepted in respect of processing these withdrawals. It's very key that members' bank details 
um, are correct as we will do a bank validation for that member. No third party payments will be processed in respect of these um, emergency savings withdrawals. Um, I think, yeah, there's something else that I actually want to cover in respect of the savings. I just want to go back this one slide, right? So having mentioned that one withdrawal per tax year is allowable from the emergency savings pot, right? One could ask me, so what happens when a um, when a member withdraws from the emergency savings pot, then three months down the line, they resign. And this resignation takes place still within the same financial or within the same tax year. So how that will be treated is that the members, the member will be able to access the vested pot within that financial tax year and because the savings pot withdrawal is will be regarded as a second withdrawal in that tax year the member would then not be able to access that amount or whatever is in the savings pot withdrawal at the time of resignation they would have an option to either transfer it to their new fund um, if they're transferring a portion of or a portion of part of their benefit to a different retirement um, savings um, fund, or they can preserve that within the fund um, as well, but they cannot access it within that same tax year once a withdrawal has already been made. So, um, and then there's options from the various pots and I just want us to actually look at all the various options per pot when a member actually withdraws from the retirement fund. So this is when a member resigns or is retrenched from the retirement fund. In the vested pot, a member has an option to take all or part cash of whatever amount is sitting in the vested pot. They can also choose to transfer um, they benefits with other parts to another retirement fund, um, or can, they can select to have the the vested part um, in, as a paid up member. And but once they've made that selection to either transfer or to make um, paid up, it all has to go in with all the other parts. So it can't be I am transferring only this part, but it's actually a transfer of the full member benefit into. Um, a retirement fund or into a paid up membership group. And then with the savings part here as well, um, they can access all or part of it. That is if again, there is no prior withdrawal within that fund um, tax year. And then with the retirement part, as previously mentioned, they cannot access that in cash, but can only access it at retirement. All parts transfer or they can make it paid up with all the other parts. And then when a member retires from their retirement fund, with regard to the vested part, they have an option of taking part cash, except if it's below the, the, the minimum. And then they've also got an option of buying a, a pension with that. And the T-Day regime rules again apply when um, it, 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 in, in concern to the vested part, just as a reminder. And then with the savings and the retirement part, they can take all or part of that in cash, or buy a pension and then with um, the retirement pot, no cash except if that is below the minimum. It is therefore compulsory for the retirement pot to, for a member to buy a pension with that amount. So the whole idea re uh, really regarding this is to make sure that a member has something at retirement um, to assist them with receiving a retirement income at um, post their retirement age. And that is what the retirement pot um, seeks to achieve. So now that we, we, we know all of this, what is the next steps, right? For you as employer and for you as an intermediary that will be processing this on behalf of the member or that will perhaps be um, submitting the claims on behalf of the member. It's important that we have con the correct contact information for the employer or the person that is that will have access to 
the Sunlam corporate portal, which is our employer portal. It is important that we have um, member contact information, so cell phone number and or email address of the members. This will help us keep the member up to date with the process, uh, where in the process they claim is. So the, what the fund will do is communicate um, when we have made a tax application, where, um, when we are ready to process payment, and this will be done via SMS or via email, depending what contact information we've got. And then it's also very important for um, the employer to advise the fund where there is a potential Section 37D deduction that may need to take place on the member's um, retirement savings before processing a um, two-part withdrawal. The fund reserves the right to decline a two-part withdrawal where there is a pending Section 37D or potential 37D um, that may be affected by the reduction of the member's um, fund credit should we pay out the two-part withdrawal. The tax member's tax number is compulsory. We cannot process a two -part, emergency two-part savings withdrawal without a member's tax number as we need to submit a, um, a tax or we need to request a tax directive from SARS for members. So members that have never registered with the revenue have to register with the revenue before submitting a, an emergency withdrawal. We require the member's correct ID number. This will help us with the bank validation. So there is a bank validation that takes effect or that takes place before processing the claim um, with the submission of bank details. As I mentioned previously, that is compulsory bank details in the name of the member, as well as the member's correct ID number with the correct names of the member um, must be included in the application. So where a member changes surnames, um, that happens a lot with, um, especially more so with females that get married and they change their names. You must ensure that um, before submitting that claim, the correct member surname is updated, as that also um, works with the bank validation um, that will make a smooth validation and will not kick out the claim when validating the member's bank details. So um, that is my last slide. That's that on the on unpacking the two-part withdrawal. I'm now going to hand over to Zaitu to take us through um, the Sunlam corporate portal and how you can actually navigate that. Zaitu, over to you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, um, welcome to the Sunlam Corporate Portal. I have got a hell of a lot more slides than Yolanda, and I'm going to try and get through it in as short a period as possible. Okay, so um, when we start off, uh, you're going to be required, as Yolanda indicated, to register on our portal. Once you have registered, you will access the URL in the screen attached, and you will be provided with a username and password. You use that username and password, and you get into our portal, and then your journey begins. Okay, so when you get into our portal, like I said, you will have a username. Your username will appear here. That was the little username I created. And then you will access this little icon and begin your journey. So it's quite an interactive little application, and it's very self-explanatory. So um, on the screen in front of you, you will be presented with... Um, with a little menu on your left hand side. Um, the first option on there is obviously your active members because you're not going to be submitting emergency savings to part withdrawals for members who have exited clearly. So um, then before I get into the nitty gritty of how to actually submit a with a two part uh, emergency savings withdrawal. I just want to highlight some of the nice nifty little capabilities we've also added here. Just below the active members, you will see there's something that um, enables you to go and do a bulk bank account detail upload or a bulk contact detail upload. 
um, what you do here is you would go and download a particular template, populate that with the information that is required, and then you would just re-upload the template here as well. And that gives you, as the HR person or broker consultant, the ability to update multiple members' bank account or contact detail information in one go which is a big time saver and has been very popular with our HR consultants so far. Now, moving on to how you submit the claim. I hope I'm not going too fast, but if you have any questions, please post them in the Q&A section and we will adjust, adjust them at the end of the session. So um, we have a little search bo a box on top of the screen here, and um, in this, you, all you need to populate is one of these items. Populate it, hit the little search button, and it'll bring back the member that you want to transact with against, which is pretty simple again, right? No, no difficulty there. Bring back your member. So we've highlighted that we'd like to do it on Mr. Potter, who happens to be part of a a hairdressing institute and we're going to go forward with him the first thing that you will see once you click on mr potter is or mr jonas in this case sorry is that you will see that that he has um all his information is in one space so you can see that he's got um, his member number there and we have a little bit of an earnings there we've got his id number there like yolanda indicated previously there's certain compulsory information that is required to submit an emergency two-part savings withdrawal request and we will get into that now now so let me just give you a breakdown of what the different menu items do the member details on the on the left hand side on the left hand menu the member details button gives you a view of the member breakdown the emergency savings withdrawal option will enable you to submit that emergency savings withdrawal claim request my inbox is your inbox right and any reports or downloads that you request will be accessible there and then on the personalized forms but this is the, the area where we get a little bit um, creative because going into the future our claims process our normal withdrawal claims process and the trial process will be very different due to two-part legislation and we've created some nifty capability here which I'll go through later on in the session So let's talk about two-part savings withdrawal and what the mandatory information is in order to make this thing work, right? So in order for us to be able to um, service an emergency savings two-part withdrawal request, we need a valid email address or a mobile number for a member. And this is required because we need to be able to contact and communicate with our member during the claims process. We need a valid bank account detail that is in the name of the member and that aligns with the member's ID number and member's um, first name and last name. We do a validation, we use an external process to do a validation and should that validation not pass, we will not be able to use the bank account in order to deposit the member's money into. We need either a residential or a postal address that um, we can validate as well. And like Yolanda indicated earlier on, we need a valid member, South African member tax number, since there will be tax implications to each one of these withdrawals. The employer during the claim request though, the employer will have very, uh, multiple opportunities to update any missing information during the process. Moving on. So the first screen that you will come up against when you go into the emergency savings withdrawal menu option is the option that gives you that gives you a breakdown of where the member's money is. So like Yolanda indicated earlier on, you could have money in the vested pot, the non-vested pot, the retirement pot, or the savings pot. So with two pot, we've obviously transferred some of the member's money into the savings pot. And the member is able to withdraw up to 30,000, minimum of 2,000, up to 30,000 then of that emergency savings withdrawal money at, as at now. Before we allow you to actually go further with this, we, there will always be T's and C's, right? We're dealing with the government, so there's always going to be T's and C's. So the T's and C's is 
Minimum is 2,000 Rand. Member must elect with draw amount greater, greater than the minimum. Maximum is whatever's in the pot. As at this year, the maximum will be 30,000 Rand. However, next year, if the member um, is able to accumulate more than 30,000 Rand in that pot, he will be able to uh, um, withdraw greater, a greater amount. What must always be kept in mind is that um, there will always be tax implications. And should the member have any outstanding tax debt with SARS, they will also have to go and um, that will also be deducted from any amounts um, for two part saving, uh, any amounts requested as a two part savings withdrawal. The little blue bit is the SARS two-part calculator, and this is really cool because what this allows you as the HR person or broker consultant to do whilst you are sitting with your employee and trying to submit a claim for him is to give him an idea of what his tax debt will be like and how much money he could potentially get out. This is actually a link into the SARS two-part retirement calculator. It's a very efficient, very effective, and gives you an answer in almost no time at all. So I do suggest that you use this when you are submitting whilst you are in consultation with your employee. The mandated requirements is, like I went through earlier on, um, email address or mobile number, valid bank account, proof of address, and South African tax registration. So when you move further down into the form, you have two options. You can go and update the member's details if you know that there is missing information, or you can go straight on to the emergency savings withdrawal process. Please keep in mind, if you enter the submit emergency savings withdrawal process and there is missing information, you will be prompted to return to the update member details section. And that is why you should actually go in there first and update all the information required before continuing on. So let me just give you a brief background of the information that you can update in this process. So when you get into the screen, you will get any mandated information that we have, static member information that we have on, on, on our application. That will include the member's name, member number, and ID number. If there is an email address or a cell phone number for the member, we will display that to you. Alternatively, these spaces will, be, will remain blank and you can then update it in the process. A little bit further down, you'll have the opportunity to input bank information for the member. Before you get to the actual screen where you input the bank information, however, you will be given a, a little bit of a rundown in terms of um, what it is that we do and what what has how the bank account needs to look. So we cannot pay into a, a clear card account. We cannot pay into a third party bank account. It must be in the name of the member. If the account is not open for more than three months, you need to provide us with at least three months worth of bank statements um, or bank statements. And you need to provide us with ID documentation and all of those things. All of that is very clear and is very bold on the screen before you actually get into inputting the bank account information. Once you input the bank account information and you hit the update button, you'll know if it's successful or not because you'll get a nice green tick and you'll be very happy about that. Um, then the next part of it is when you actually submit your request. So here, what I'd like to take you through is I'd like to draw awareness to the fact that we've made it almost like a little workflow of sorts. So it, it kind of prompts you to the next step all the time, which is very helpful. And like I said earlier, if you update all the members' information prior to actually entering into the actual request process, you'll get a whole lot of green ticks. You'll be very happy about that. Alternatively, if you've gotten little red crosses, you'd need to go back to the update member information to, to rectify all of that before you come back in here, right? So the first part is just like a pre-validation step. Yes, you've got all the mandated information you need. The next step takes you through to the process where you can update the member's tax reference number, 
because uh, uh, we haven't done that at this point yet. And we also have a space where we can go and update the member's home address or postal address if it's different, whichever one you want to use, right? So again, pretty self-explanatory, no, no rocket science yet. Then the next step is the bank validation step. And here, whatever bank information you've entered will come up here. If there is no, no, no difference in the information as at this point yet, then you're just going to hit the next button. If this information is no longer valid, you will have to go back to the update member details step again, which means you have to get out of the actual submission process. Again, you save yourself a lot of time if you just update that information before you get into the step, right? And then the final step is where we actually get to the nitty gritty of let's pay our member money out. What we've got here that I need to bring to your attention is a little block. That block is going to have um, the member ta annualized taxable income in that block. If the member's annualized taxable income is has changed or if that amount is zero, you will be required to input the annualized taxable income or at least the member's gross annualized earnings for the last year. This is essential for us to provide to SARS during the directive process so that we can get the correct tax back so that the member can is, is not left out in the cold. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> The next step is a little screen where we give you the option of saying how much money do you actually want to withdraw as the member. The member has the option of withdrawing the entire pot up to a maximum of 30,000 rand this year, or they could have elected to withdraw just a rand amount, right? Whichever one they choose, it's fine. You just click a little button and then once it's all done, you hit submit and then you get a screen like this, which basically tells you everything's been submitted, your claim is now with Sunlum, and um, you've done what you needed to do. So it wasn't that hard, it wasn't, it wasn't difficult at all, and I sincerely hope that you will find our portal interactive and easy enough to navigate. Things that you must be cognizant of during the two-part emergency savings withdrawal process is that we've realized that our members want to remain um, want to remain aware of what is happening with the request at all times. Keeping this in mind, we have elected to um, engage with our members six times during the claim process. We will send a message to the member, either to his email address or the mobile number he's provided, to tell him that we have received his request for um, the withdrawal and that the normal SLA is 10 days. When the withdrawal amount is confirmed, we will then communicate again. When we apply for tax, we will go and communicate that we have applied for tax. And upon the successful receipt of a directive from SARS, we will once again communicate to the member. Once the payment has been completed into the member's bank account, again, he will get a message from us. And then the final message from us will be once the tax certificate is available for him to download or we can email it to him as well and that in a nutshell ladies and gentlemen is a wrap well not just yet sorry you're gonna have to bear with me just a little bit longer so like we said earlier on um, withdrawals as we knew them in the past is completely gone. The days where the member has, was able to come to us and tell us, I am resigning, um, please can I have my retirement fund money, is completely gone. The government and SARS have put legislation in place to ensure that members are almost forced to, to prepare for retirement. And with that in mind, the member now needs to tell us, even if he wants the maximum amount of cash out, he still needs to tell us what needs to happen with the money that he cannot withdraw at this point in time. So what we at Sunlam have done is we've created a capability to kind of try to streamline the withdrawal process, right? So nothing is going to be straightforward there's 100% of your money, deduct tax, pay it into my bank account. It's not going to be like that anymore. There's more than one pot to think about now. And what we've created is a um, personalized member withdrawal form, which then also access the consent form in the same breath. 
So again, yeah, under the personalized forms menu, there will be three options. There will be an option for withdrawal, retitle, and um, emergency savings. The emergency savings form can be downloaded and populated. The information will then still need to be captured in the normal withdrawal, emergency savings withdrawal request process. However, if the employer or HR, uh, employer, HR person, broker consultant needs evidence from the member, a signed document to say that this is what the member has requested, they could always download that form, get the member to sign it and keep it on their records for whatever purpose, right? The withdrawal form and the title form, um, you would need to return to Sunlam. The, the emergency savings withdrawal form, you don't have to return to Sunlam, right? The form looks like this. So we've got the withdrawal request form. There's a date there. You want to enter the exit date there. And the basic request form will allow for maximum cash withdrawal. This is probably going to be the most um, favored option because clearly when people leave, they want most of their money. The advanced request form looks to, look, looks to do fancy things like putting your money in more annuities and all of those kind of things. For today, for the purpose, of time, um, I'm going to go through the basic withdrawal form and I'm just going to show you how it is that you would download this and, and what it is that you would do with it, right? So you'd either enter your email address as the HR consultant or the member's email address or a mobile number, right? Whoever receives this form then needs to take accountability to populate it and return it to the HR consultant who would then have to still submit the form to Sunlam via the existing channels for um, it, uh, that, that you currently use for the ex, uh, during the exit process. Further down in the form, before you can even request the form, you will get a download because you've obviously gone into a specific member. So you will get a download of what the member's entitlement is in each pot. And we also tell you what the member is entitled to do with the money in each of those pots. So at the point in time that we did this exercise, we obviously hadn't amassed any retirement pot savings because that will only come at the end of the first month after September. Um, um, but any money in the retirement pot must be preserved. So you'd have to tell us how do you want to preserve it? Do you want it, do you want it to stay inside the fund? Do you want it to go to a specific annuity? What do you want us to do with that money, right? The vested pot, you're able to take um, part in cash and part preserved. And then the savings pot, you're able to withdraw if you have ha not had a previous withdrawal in the current year. Right, And this is where this member has not yet made a savings withdrawal. If the member had made a savings withdrawal, it would tell you when last the savings withdrawal would, would have been, and you would get a message to say what the member is entitled to do during that period. So again, this is very useful information. So when the member comes to you as the HR consultant and tells you that I want to withdraw, you can then go on here, show him what his entitlement would look like and what it is that he would have to consider. And you might get him changing his mind in certain ways. I don't know. All right. So again, in the, in the personalized form, the basic information that we need is it acts as a consent for withdrawal from the fund. The member's personal information as it exists on our system will be visible on this form. The member's banking information as it exists on our system will be visible on this form. A breakdown on member's benefits, again, as it is on our system, will be available. There will be a section allocated to identify a financial advisor if the member nominates to have one. And there will also be a, a section on the form that speaks to annualized taxable income and what the SARS impacts is going to be based on the savings part. Then there's going to be a section with the me for member declaration and signatures, which then ties into this also being your consent form. The form needs to be returned to the employer so that it can be submitted to Sunlam via the normal channels for, ex for the exit process. So this is what the letter effectively looks like. The first part is just basically a little bit of a, a write-up in terms of what this document is about, what the member wants to withdraw, what the options are, and those kind of things. The second part speaks to the member static information that we have on our system. And if there's a section here, there's always a section. If there's any demediation of this information required, we will up populate it here and we will update it once we get the forms on our side. 
So third part of the form speaks to where you have your money at the moment. And again, because this is the simple, the basic form, we're going to look to give you the maximum amount of cash. And this form has been tailored to geared towards that, right? And then there is certain information here in terms of what you what what your options options are if should you elect to preserve certain amounts of money. The the fourth page in this document would then speak to to would you member want to be a financial advisor? And if they do have a financial advisor, there is space here for you to update the financial advisor information. And then, like I said earlier on, very important information, annualized taxable income has to be updated on this form because that is what will be used by SARS. Last part, the consent part, as always, member signs, member dates, and once this form is returned to you as um, as the HR consultant, you can then upload it to Sanam site and we can then proceed with all the work that we need to do in order to exit your member. The process to our to the process so far has been we've tried to keep it as streamlined as possible. Um, but again, we we're constantly refining it as we go along. So I hope the session has been informative. I hope I haven't spoken too fast and I hope I've been clear enough for you to understand what our application is about. Please use our application. It's very simple to use and do not hesitate to contact us should you have any questions. Over to Yuli Yolanda. Thanks, Zaitu. Um, Zaitu's got up the contact information should you need assistance with submitting the um, an emergency savings pot withdrawal or a normal withdrawal i think what's key for for me to highlight from there is that all claims post 1 september are required to be submitted via the process that zaitu has taken you through right um I, I we've got only two minutes and I, I do apologize. We had technical issues starting at the start of the session, um, but I do want to address um, one or two questions which I will summarize perhaps maybe in one question. There's a few questions that we've received, but um, they all necessarily speak to, to more or less the same thing, right? So I, the, the one questions I do, you can also just jump in here. Um, as, as I'm, I'm attempting to respond to these questions. The one standard question is that people have not received communication around the functionality, um, around how to access the portal, and um, therefore we're not aware that the portal is available, right? So let me start off by saying, during the month of August and, and September, we have sent out newsletters that have were specific to two pot withdrawals um for for sunlam easy retirement plan so these were sent out to intermediaries whom we've got contact information or updated contact information for as well as participating employer where we've got contact information for in those newsletters most of the second newsletter that was sent out the first week of september we included an application form to the registration of the Sanam corporate portal. That form needs to be completed by the employer um, and the employer can appoint themselves as employer or an employer representative to, pro in, in, to get administrative rights to, to, the, to the portal, or they can select to appoint an intermediary to get administrative rights to the portal. Once the application has been received <clears throat> the form has an email address to which the application must be submitted sanlam will then process and make available the portal and confirm via email once access has been granted in the confirmation email you will receive a guide as to how to activate access to the portal as well 
as a guide that takes you through the same screens that Zai2 has, has, has taken you through now, showing you how to submit an emergency savings part to withdrawal, as well as a retirement retrenchment or a, um, a resignation um, withdrawal via the system. So that will be available, that is available, that will be available. If you have not received the newsletter, um, please send an email through to Sunlam Easy at sunlam.co.za and request for a, um, a copy of that newsletter so that you can have access to these documents that I am referring to as well. That will help you then um, get onto or get access to the Sunlam corporate portal. The other question that I um, that we've received is that how long does registration take? Um, as we, we have a client that has submitted a, a, an application earlier this week. I think you can help me there, Zai, too. I know that we do have had a high number of requests oh. around Sunlam and not just Sunlam Easy Retirement Plan. Mm -hmm. So we, our, our call center is a little bit backlogged at the moment, but once the um, the consultants in the call center get onto actual registration. The registration process itself is actually quite um, simple and and quick. So um, it's just about as long as you as the HR or broker consultant complete the registration forms and submit it to the to the call center, it will be addressed and the registration process should be quite seamless. Um, again, if 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 you've had um, challenges with registration i'm sure that if you um send a communication to the ec client case center um it will be um dealt with quite efficiently um thanks i too i think that's that's in a nutshell the key questions that we've received i have received a question that actually asks if the intermediaries are getting involved um in terms of this administrative process how um, is Sanlam compensating those intermediaries? Again, the involvement of the intermediary is not compulsory. It is um, a decision between the intermediary and the employer as to who the employer appoints to submit this, uh, these claims for, for the on behalf of the employer and slash the members as well. So um, there is so so that will continue as is. Um, I encourage intermediaries to um, actually encourage the employers to take ownership of submitting this these claims themselves as it is an administrative process that the employer should own themselves but again where the employers can't do that then the intermediaries um are then required to assist them in that in that sense but it's an agreement between the employer and the intermediary as who is the best person to submit these claims on their behalf and um, um, we're already way over our time yeah Yolanda, if I can just add, um, um, a, a more of a sweetener for the employee to actually log onto the broker portal would be that um, the intermediary would, uh, I mean, the HR person would have access to certain reports, to certain stats from a member perspective. You'll get graphs, and there's quite a couple of other cool things, and constantly adding to the portal as well. And um, as the HR consultant, you'd have access to all of that information, which means information is obviously. Um, power right so the more information you have better and as long as we constantly building on this capability you're going to have you're going to get the, you're going to be the fruit of all of that stuff and then one of the yeah. questions i saw if i can just answer that quickly um if you are a broker to a number of clients yes there is a capability you just need to provide us with a list of the clients with the registration form that you're completing and you will be you, your access will then be granted to all of those clients you will get a when you log on you will get a view of all of the clients that you are the broker consultant to and you should then be able to transact on any one of those Thanks, I too. Um, without a further ado, um, I really want to close off the session. We are five minutes of our time. Before I close it off, I would like to encourage you to update the employer and intermediaries to update all contact information with the funds. It's very important where, that wherever there is a change in the contact person at the employer level, the fund is made aware of this as information does not reach the employer where we don't have the updated contact information. So again, I encourage the intermediaries 
to um, assist us in that regard in getting all participating employers contact information to get a form to um, completing or providing us this updated information, please send an email to easyretirement.sunlam.co.za and they will provide you with the, the required form that needs to be completed. Um, so in the last 30 seconds, I really want to thank you for um, attending the session. I do hope that you found value in the session and that you have found it insightful. And I do trust that we've provided you with the tools to take back and implement in an effort to better manage your staff or your clients if you are in intermediary retirement savings arrangement. I want to further thank you for partnering with Sunlam in our vision to accelerating a better working South Africa for all. Without your trust and without your support, this vision cannot come to life. From myself and Zai too, take care and do live with confidence. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.